Our next speaker is Dr. Sriram Ramagopalan. Dr. Ramagopalan is a rising star of MS research based at Oxford University. His research has recently linked the interaction between vitamin D and a particular gene variant with an increased risk in MS. Today he will describe the role of vitamin D and what it might play in, in the whole story of MS. So Dr. Sriram Ramagopalan. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, so as Jeremy said, I'm, I'm Ram, easily pronounced and known, and I'm from Oxford. Um, I've said I'm relatively new in the field. Uh, this is the first time I've ever given a public lecture, so I apologize from the start, but if there's anything I haven't explained, feel free to ask questions at the end if I've not made anything too clear. It's a privilege to be able to talk to you today. I think it's very important to let you guys know about the important and exciting research that's going on in MS at the moment. So as Prof Stewart told you, um, genes play a role in MS, an important role, but the environment plays a much larger role in determining who gets MS. As researchers over the years, we've been trying to understand what these environmental factors are. It looks like there's more than one. I'd like to show you a few slides now, if that's okay. Here we have a map of uh, MS prevalence or frequency in the United States. So a darker color indicates a higher prevalence of MS. So as you can see, the northern parts of the US have more MS, or MS is more common than the southern states. Now looking at uh, the distribution of MS in France now, if uh, we have a color-coded MS prevalence, so a high MS prevalence is um, color, uh, code is blue, medium as green and low in orange. So again, there's more MS in the northern part of France as compared to the southern parts. Now looking here at Australia, unfortunately there's no color coding here, so it's just numbers. Um, so the numbers in the, well, the bold uh, numbers are the amounts of MS in each region. So looking at Queensland, uh, there's no value of 18, so it's much lower than what's in the southern parts of Australia, which is up to about 75. So what does this mean? Well, there's clearly a latitude effect. So latitude, what we say is a latitude is a strong predictor of MS risk. And so that means the further away you are from the equator, both north and south, the higher your risk of MS. Now, what does this latitude effect mean? Well, over the years, we've studied a number of things. We all thought it was climate-related. So we looked at rainfall, we looked at snow, we looked at temperature. But the most consistent finding seems to be the amount of sunshine you receive. So the higher latitude you are, the less sunshine you get. Well, what's so interesting about sunshine? As you're all aware through the media, that too much sunshine is actually bad for you, increases your risk of skin cancer. But sunshine is also important for making vitamin D. Now, sunshine shining on your skin is, uh, a pro is part of the first part of the step of making vitamin D. Unless you happen to be eating a lot of reindeer, vitamin D is relatively rare in your foods. <laughs> so therefore, our main source of vitamin D is actually through sun exposure. So because of this, most individuals living in North America, Northern Europe, such as the UK, and in fact, southern Australia are deficient for vitamin D, uh, mainly in, um, in the winter, but depending on how much you go out in the summer and how much sunscreen you wear, you may also be deficient in the summer. Now, is there any evidence for vitamin D in MS? Well, recent studies have shown that MS patients are actually deficient for vitamin D before they get MS. As Prof Stewart told you, the ANS Gene Consortium has uh, recently made some breakthrough discoveries this year. And one of these genes is a vitamin D-related gene, and this is involved in how much uh, circulating vitamin D you have in your body. There's also an, a month of birth effect in MS. So more MS patients are born in May as compared to November in the Northern Hemisphere, that's the North America and Northern Europe. This is uh, reversed in Australia, so uh, more MS patients are born in November as compared to May. 
So this effect seems to be vitamin D related. Um, I say that because, so looking at the UK, for example, if uh, a mother is pregnant over the winter and delivers in May, she's le she has less vitamin D than her mother is pregnant over the summer and de uh, delivers in November. So what could vitamin D be doing? So we've, we've, we're told in school that vitamin D is important for bone. If you don't take it, you'll get rickets. Um, but research that I've been recently involved in has shown that the main gene for MS, the gene that was discovered about 30 years ago, which is an immune gene, we've been able to show that vitamin D controls the effect of this gene. So this, this vitamin D gene interaction is pretty exciting. We're all excited about it in the field. We've always been puzzled as to what vitamin D could be doing in MS, and this now provides a direct link by genes and the environment together. And secondly, whilst you can't change the genes that you're born with, our study implies you can change a risk somehow of vitamin D. So as I said, it's an exciting time for MS research. And as Graham Stewart said, I do believe we will soon be able to prevent the disease. I'm not sure how long it'll take, but I do think we will get there. Thank you.